just um, you travel to your home hometown for the first time in three years, and you visited your mom um, who was had broken over what you've been going through, and um, she's down with stroke. You visited the grave of your brother who was killed uh, during the time you were um, in detention, and um, you've not seen your family uh, in America for more than three years. And I, I want to say, uh, deals like this, uh, the reasons that Fela probably said that most Africans or Nigerians don't want to fight for a better society. When it's all so said and done, uh, is it worth it? Um, I'm asking you, is it worth it? And, um, and what are the limits uh, of the price that you're willing to pay for, for all this? You know, if you don't choose where you are born, <laughs> You cannot tell what is what. Well, um, I was born in Nigeria, and my 20 years stay in the U.S. I refused to change my citizenship because I wanted to deal with the consequences of being born in Nigeria. And this is not to say that those who uh, change their citizenship, uh, you know, they made any wrong decision. Uh, but as to your real question, which is how much is too much? Let me tell you, um, if it is for humanity, you make a decision to stand up for something or you fall for nothing. I mean, I mean or you fall for everything that, you know, I hope I go there. So this has been my trajectory in life since uh, I was uh, 10 years old. I've always thought about how to change society when I was a guy born when I was living in the village. Never thought, you know, by any stretch of imagination that I would come to live in New York City, one of the, the largest cities in the world, and one of the most sophisticated, created business over there that was thriving. Uh, and then one day, packed my bag and decided that I want to go and deal with the consequences of my place of birth. That's what it is, um, you know, I hope my wife is not watching this. She will be more heartbroken. Uh, but when I saw my mom, I must admit that uh, I was very sad. I didn't. I wasn't at my brother's barrier, but to see my mom paralyzed from neck below was very heartbroken. Because when I was released in 2019, she had a two-year visa, and my intention was I will get on the plane and travel and she do all the medical checks. If there's only something hidden, we could get her treated in the US. It never happened until I saw her last weekend. And uh, it's not easy. You don't want to go in the direction of my wife and my kids. You know, as I'm talking to you, um, they're going through their own challenges. You know, some of them mental, you know, kids haven't seen their dad for a long time, you know. Uh, and they keep asking their mom, when is daddy coming home? And sometimes when I call them on um, on uh, FaceTime, they ask, when are you coming home? And I have no answers. And uh, I just have to give the network excuse. I can't hear you. you know? I'm not saying I'm lying to them now. But it's just so sad and so tough to answer kids that you don't know when you'll be back home. 